Hello ladies and welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark Roden and in today's video we are going to be going over the top 25 best handling cars for less than $10,000. Now what that means is literally just cars that you can you, you you're going to be in terms of racing you're not you're not just looking for straight line speed you're looking for more uh the, the handling aspect it's, it's what it says you man like I don't know how, why I have to explain this to you come on come on use your brain obviously I've been gone for like a week I haven't uploaded in like a week holy moly i'll let you guys know about it at the end if you actually care i'm not going to waste your guys's time for people that don't care uh in the intro so if you want to care if you or if you want to learn about why i've been gone for a little while and why i've been taking like a couple of breaks here and there uh it'll be at the end of the end of the video but without further ado let's get right into it with number 25 and that Anna goes to the toyota mr2 aw11 or the first of the generations of the mr2s pop-up headlights mid-engine call my mother you know, call my mother because I might commit a crime. Car comes with a 1.6 liter inline four, making 135 horsepower in its rear wheel drive. These things are incredibly light. You're going to notice that trend a lot. Um, this car, the reason why it's here at the number 25 spot is because it takes a skilled person to actually get all of its potential. But what, if you are skilled, the potential is really there. It's, it's a very good handling car if you know how to handle it. The problem is most people aren't going to. 24th place, however, is going to a much heavier automobile. It is the Ford Fiesta. ST. I don't talk about the Fiesta enough because I'm from America, and in America, we have the Focus ST, and we always just go with the Focus ST, to be honest. Like, there's really no point in us buying a Fiesta over the Focus, so that's that's the reason why I don't really talk about it. But they come with a 1.6 liter turbo inline four, making 197 horsepower in their front wheel drive. That's not great, obviously. A lot of these cars are not going to be great in terms of their horsepower, but what, what it lacks in horsepower makes up for an incredibly small wheelbase and incredibly lightweight, too. There's a reason why people use these things as rally cars all the freaking time. 23rd is going to my car. <laughs> Ooh, I get to talk about it. The Acura Integra LS. Now, obviously, you could find a GSR for less than 10K as well. I'm going to put the LS here because I own an LS, and so I can personally talk about it. The car comes with a 1.8 liter inline four, making 140 horsepower in its front wheel drive. On top of that, the GSR is, in my opinion, just not really worth it right now. They're stupidly expensive, and LS is not just as good, but come on, it's, it's pretty freaking close, man. Just buy this thing have a whole lot more fun uh front wheel drive lightweight hondas by the way are always going to be a good a good combo 22nd is going to the first muscle car of this list and you guys are going to have to hear me out here because it's the ford mustang gt fox body now i get what you're thinking a mustang on a good handling cars list has he heard the crowd killer memes yes i have but listen the car comes with a five liter v8 and it makes 225 horsepower for one of the years uh and it's rear wheel drive the reason why i said one of the years is because this is during the gas crisis so like every single year has a different horsepower number so just keep that in mind when actually going to buy one of these things but since it's during the gas crisis they had to completely change muscle cars. And so in the sense of muscle cars, people don't like them because they're lighter weight and they have a smaller wheelbase and they care more about the handling, but with less horsepower than your typical muscle car does. So muscle car guys don't like that. They like the straight line speed cars. But for us handling guys, that is what you want. And that is what these cars had. 21st place. It's a car that I used to talk about all the time, but I haven't talked about it in quite some time now. It's the Mazda Speed 3 either generation first gen second gen doesn't matter they're both under 10k and they're both good deals in my opinion the cars come with a 2.3 liter turbocharged inline four making 263 horsepower in their front wheel drive i wrote all wheel why did i write all wheel drive on my uh script that's not true it's their front wheel drive i don't know why i wrote that but yeah manual only hatchbacks that are freaking handling monsters go cop one baby 20th place is going to like the japanese definition of of handling the subaru impreza 2.5 rs gc this is i love the gc impreza so freaking much man if if every single one of them weren't absolute rust boxes i would probably own one they come with a 2.5 liter flat four making 165 horsepower in their all-wheel drive they're pretty much just like a rebadged forester or subaru outback or honestly even like a blob eye or bug eye impreza as well they're pretty much the same thing but they're a lot lighter and that's what really that's what really grabs you that's the hook line and stinker 19th place is going to another quote-unquote muscle car the chevy corvette c4 i don't know if you would classify a corvette as a muscle car in my opinion you do i mean it's got the same every everything is exactly the same about it as a camaro except for it's more aerodynamic but either way car comes with a 5.7 liter v8 making 245 horsepower for one of the years and it's rear wheel drive same story with the fox body that we talked about earlier this is during the gas crisis so they may they had to every single year has different horsepower numbers and they had to make changes and that some of those changes were that it would have less horsepower but in return the car would be lighter and better handling which is what we like 18th place however 
is going to the wonderful Mitsubishi Eclipse GT 2G. I just realized that since this is a video for cars under 10k, I could easily, you could put, you could find a GSX, so, you know, let's talk about the GSX instead of the GT here. Uh, I'm gonna have to think about it off the top of my head though because i didn't i wrote down the specs for the gt so i might be wrong here but i believe that the gsx comes with a two liter turbo inline four that makes 210 horsepower in their all-wheel drive it's a baby 4g63 uh it's pretty much a baby evo it's a pocket evo they're even lighter than evos they handle like a monster buy one buy one now 17th place is an, is an oddball. I could have put the freaking 8th gen SI here for sh sure, but I'm going to put the 7th gen today because I don't talk about it enough. So it's the Honda Civic SI EP3 or the 7th generation Honda Civic SI. Uh, every Civic SI is a good freaking option. But this one's just a little bit wacky. That's why people don't like it. Car comes with a 2 liter inline 4 making 160 horsepower in its front wheel drive. I do believe that is a K series 2, which is obviously really good for making power, but if it's a civic man any si civic is going to be good for handling there is just like their whole thing 16th place is going to a beauty a freaking underrated beauty too dude these things are still so cheap and it blows me away it's the porsche 944 the porsche 944 comes with a 2.5 liter inline four making 147 horsepower in its rear wheel drive obviously this is probably like one of the most disliked porsches out there because they they, they were you know underpowered and they weren't a porsche 911 so people didn't like them but where they lacked in horsepower they made up for in handling it's still a porsche still handles like a porsche just not as fast as one is going to like the only oh wow i think i don't know if well 15th place is going to like the only american uh Jap like american wannabe japanese tuner the dodge neon srt4 that actually worked in my opinion the cobalt ss kind of flopped and same with the four tauruses um but the dodge neon that one actually took off a little bit. And the reason why is because it came with a 2.4 liter turbo inline four, making 230 horsepower in its front wheel drive. It did all that in a body that only weighed a couple hundred more pounds than a Miata. These things are autocross monsters. Base model neons are still used in autocrosses all the time. The SRT4 is just a better version of those. 14th place is probably the most like controversial one on this list, if I'm being honest. It's definitely the one that you could argue doesn't really make sense to be here. It's a Nissan 300ZX Z32. The Z32 is nowhere near as lightweight as a lot of the other cars on this list. But in my opinion, it still handles really, really well. The car comes with a 3 liter V6, making 222 horsepower in its rear wheel drive. It is, again, it, this one's a little weird, and I can, I, if somebody gets upset for me putting this on here, I totally understand, it, but I think it deserves a spot. 13th place, however, is a car that's almost unanimously viewed as like a good handling car the subaru brz zn6 or the first generation of the brz yes you can find these for less than ten thousand dollars now my phone's ringing and if you think that's going to make me stop recording you're dead wrong partner the car comes with a two liter flat four it makes 200 horsepower in its rear wheel drive yes it's tough to buy it to find one under 10k but it can be done and if you do you got yourself a pretty much a new age miata it's awesome 12th place is going to just the definition of handing if you want if you like think of handling cars you think of audi a4s and this is the audi a4 b5 why because the b5 is the lightest and i like the b5 the best they're so sick <laughs> and and you can find like an a4 b5 for like three grand like you can find these things for dirt cheap dude so you could spend all the rest of the money on upgrades for it car comes with a 1.8 liter turbo inline four making 170 horsepower and it's all wheel drive or front wheel drive um it is the same motor that they put in the mark 4 gti's by the way which is an incredible motor you can make a lot of power out of it but it's incredibly lightweight these things are just they're just i mean dude they're using everything rally racing dtm racing whatever it, autocross whatever it may be they use them 11th place is going to another like kind of 300 zx scenario where it could be a little controversial but hear me out it's the subaru wx stink guy um yeah yeah man wx is WXs are just like WX and handling go together like white on rice. Car comes with a two liter turbo flat four making 265 horsepower and it's all wheel drive. It's actually a really good horsepower number for this list. Yes, the car is slightly heavier, but it still has its rally heritage from Subaru. I know that the Stink Eye is probably like the least favorite generation of WX, but it, it, it shouldn't be. These things are really good cars. Breaking its way into the top 10, however, at number 10 spot is the Mini Cooper S R53. Oh man. I love these cars so freaking much. If they weren't incredibly horribly unreliable, I would I would own one. I freaking love them. They come with a 1.6 liter supercharged inline four, making 170 horsepower in their front wheel drive. They are like the handling monsters. There's a whole Mini Cooper Cup racing. Like these things are like pretty much the British Miatas, right? These things are absolutely amazing at handling. However, again, I do want to point out that they are unreliable. But if you're just buying a little race car, bro, who cares? 
from one unreliable pooper to another unreliable pooper, ninth place is the Mazda RX-7 FB, the, the Mazda RX-7 Facebook Marketplace. That's where you're going to be finding these bad boys, and they're going to be stupidly overpriced because people do not understand the pricing of any RX-7 besides FBs. Either way, this car comes with a 1.1 liter, two-rotor rotary engine, making 100 horsepower in its rear-wheel drive. Obviously, that's horrible. Uh, and honestly, the rotary engine that comes in the car is not great either, but what people do is they put an LS in them, and it's automatic. Bone stock LS in a, an FB RX-7 is enough to make this car an absolute race car. Eighth place is super freaking obvious. I mean, it was going to be here no matter what. It's the BMW 328i E36. I'm a BMW guy, so if you clicked on this video expecting not to see at least one BMW, you are a silly, silly lad. The car comes with a 2.8 liter inline six, making 190 horsepower in their rear wheel drive. Bone stock E36s, I would say, are really bad. You know, it, they definitely are not good if they're bone stock. But simple mods can make these things handle like an absolute dream. Like, and I mean simple mods. I'm talking upper control arms from like an E46 and then lower it and you're good. Coming in at seventh place is a car that I feel like everybody just kind of brushes off and never like really pays any attention to when it comes for handling the Nissan 240SX S13 because everybody always thinks that S13s are only good at drifting. Well, in order for a car to be good at drifting, it kind of has to be good at handling first okay that's kind of that's kind of how it works the car comes with a 2.4 liter inline four making 145 horsepower in its rear wheel drive these weren't obviously when they built these cars they weren't like okay we're gonna make a good drift car no they were like we're gonna make a good race car and that's what it is it is a really well handling car yes they're they make low horsepower but again they're lightweight coming in a sixth position hate that word is the wonderful honda prelude fourth generation fifth gen is arguably even better but i always talk about the fifth gen so i wanted to talk about the fourth gen today because i like it I like it a lot, mighty. Car comes with a 2.2 liter inline four, making 190 horsepower in its front wheel drive. Again, it's another Honda, man. Uh, we, Civics are obviously good options if you want to get into the handling department of the Honda world. But Preludes are just sportier versions of Civics, man. The only reason why people like the Honda Civics better is because usually the motors from Civics are better. They have B series in them, whereas the Preludes have, I think, F series or H series. I can't remember exactly what they're called, but they're not as good. But that's the only reason why people don't talk about them. If you just care about handling, then Preludes are a better option, in my opinion. Fifth place is going to another BMW, because BMW makes some good handling cars. The reliability? Questionable. Handling? Good. It's a BMW Z3. The BMW Z3 is pretty much just a pocket E46 330ci, and the E46 330ci is already a really good car. Car comes with a 3 liter inline 6, making 225 horsepower in its rear wheel drive, and a car that weighs barely any more than a Miata. Like, these things are light. These things were, these, like, BMW, even in their, like, base model cars, are already pretty good at handling. When they make a car that they set out to be a good handling car, it's gonna freaking do good. Fourth place is going to the obvious boy, the, 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 the king of, like, autocross and stuff from Germany, the Volkswagen GTI, specifically the Mark III, because I want to talk about the Mark III, and I really like the Mark III. It's probably my favorite generation of GTI. It also comes with a 2.8 liter V6. But it's not just a regular V6, it's a VR6, which makes me happy. And it makes 172 horsepower going to, of course, the front wheels. These, I mean, come on, man. GTIs are just, they're, they're, they are the German Civic Si. You know, they are just, that is exactly what they are. And so, of course, they're going to be pretty good. But you know what's better than a German Civic Si? The Civic Si. So third place is the Honda Civic Si, sixth generation. This is the one that people know of as the East K, uh, but that's just the EK. Those are the hatchbacks. Uh, this is technically an EM1, I think it is, because either way, you know what I'm talking about. It's a sixth gen Civic Si. Car comes with a 1.6 liter inline four, making 160 horsepower in its front wheel drive. Uh, it, come on, man. Again, it argue, it's argue, you could definitely argue that like a car like a Prelude or an Integra would handle better than a Civic, because they were meant to from the factory but because this car has such a good motor compared to those i did put it a little bit higher because it is just the overall better race car uh even though it might not handle as good as a prelude second place is one of those cars where if you look up online what are the best race cars in the world it always comes up it's the bmw 325i e30 admittedly it's not the 325i it's only the m3 e30 but the 325i the base model e30s are just as good man car comes with a 2.5 liter straight six making 127 horsepower in its rear wheel drive obviously light horsepower but the car is incredibly light man these things are just short wheelbase low weight freaking handling beasts they're in everything rally racing autocross circuit racing time attack hill climb doesn't matter anything that revolves around handling e30s are going to be there they are just amazing at it but a surprise to absolutely nobody on planet earth first place the best handling car for less than ten thousand dollars in my opinion is the mazda miata nc 
not really. Uh, I do believe the NB and the NA are better handling cars in the NC. I want to make that very clear, but I'm going to be talking about the NC. Why? Because I never do. And I want to, I want, I want to talk about different cars sometimes, man. So I'm going to talk about the NC today. The car comes with a two liter inline four, making 166 horsepower in its rear wheel drive. I'm sure if you went and looked at every single one of my videos I've ever made, the NC would probably only show up in like five. So I want to talk about this car a little bit more, but yes, if you actually just care about like handling, go with an NB, go with an NA. They're just, they actually are just better cars, but the NC is still really cool. And I feel like everybody kind of sleeps on it because it's not as good as the NBs just because it's only like, it's like 150 pounds heavier than those cars. And like, that's why people are like, no, it's awful. Like it has more power you know like yes it's not as good but it's a better it's a better car but not a better miata i saw somebody leave a comment that said that one time and it was perfectly described but it's still an amazing handling freaking beast though top one before they become overpriced but ladies and gentlemen that is the end of today's video of the top 25 best handling little race cars little pocket freaking meows for less than ten thousand dollars i hope you guys enjoyed if you did please just like comment and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this uh let me know what other videos you'd like to see in the comment section down below obviously all that all that good mumbo jumbo all the youtuber stuff uh hit that bell turn on notifications me, 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 me. do all that do all that please uh that's the end of today's video for those who uh, don't really care about what was going on so if you just were watching for the video bye bye i'll see you next time thank you guys for watching for people that care about what's going on uh I meant I did like a little outro last time I made a video too, where I was like trying to describe it. Pretty much just the same thing, man. I'm just trying. I'm just thinking about some things. I'm just trying to get something settled. Trying to see what I'm gonna do with all my channels. I just bought a dirt bike, and so I'm trying to think about. I, I bought a YZ250F, so I'm kind of trying to like think about what whether or not I should make videos on that for this channel, um, and maybe start doing like vlogs more often and doing them more frequently. Uh, but I, I really don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm just I'm just thinking. That's all it is, man. I'm thinking, taking some time to, for myself come up with a plan for the future because obviously i can't be doing just top 10 cheap cars lists my entire life nobody's gonna people are gonna want to stop watching that so i kind of I, I gotta start thinking about things first so that's that's pretty much all that's happening nothing super serious it's not like i'm freaking dying over here or anything like that i'm actually a healthy boy i'm a healthy boy especially since i got that dirt bike dude it's heavy i went from riding a 125 cc two stroke or four stroke 125 cc four stroke that made like 10 horsepower to this it's a 250 cc four stroke it makes 40 horsepower like this thing is fast and it's heavy it's a heavy bike it's a big bike it's tiring to ride this thing but it's a lot of fun so i'm trying to think about whether or not i should make videos on that i'm trying to think about the thing with deep dives is like i like making them but they take so much freaking time and they always are just like they don't actually like pay off that well sometimes so i'm really trying to think about what to do there um i've been trying to find an editor to edit my videos on my deep dives but nobody ever gets like my humor and i want it to be like exactly how i picture it in my head uh, or else i get disappointed in it and so i always send them off to these people to try editing them but they never come back the way i want them to and then i'm just like ugh like i don't want to do it myself because my editing sucks and so i don't want to edit them myself but i don't want other people to do it because i don't like their humor it's just it's just a big it's a big thing so the deep dives are hopefully gonna be a thing i'm just again guys i really don't know I, I i wish i could just give you like a flat out answer of exactly what's going on and what's going to happen but i just can't right now i'm just kind of seeing things i'm testing the waters that's all it is okay the water is not fine i am not jumping in right now i'm just dipping my toes in it a little bit and the fish keep nibbling at my dead skin and i'm like uh it's kind of freaking me out a little bit i don't like it and then there was a crayfish underneath one of the rocks and it bit my toe too i didn't like that either so th th that's all that's going on right now but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed if you did please be sure to like comment and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this don't worry about your boy uh i'm sorry that i've been making you guys wait i'm most likely gonna try and just <laughs> think about it while 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 doing what i was doing so I'm, I'm gonna try and go back to what it was before while also just giving myself some time to think about it but anyway thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate it look how skinny i am das and have a nice night